night guys it is a cold gray soon to be rainy night here in the end times in the shit hall of a hot lanta ga late at night now on friday april 23rd 2021 i'm not going to go all over the beginning this is part two of uh hambone gets a reading <laughs> from uh from my dear friend ariel rose here and you can go back for part one to get all of her bio, but we're moving yes. into the tarot deck now. And uh, so I just want to point out before we go further. start, because she just drew this uh, yep. unbelievably. Yep. This is at the top of what kind of cross? That's the Celtic cross spread. The top and, of the Celtic and cross. And that is the Trish, that's the Rider Waite yes. tarot. It's actually my, my, my major arcana. Yes of the tarot deck is the fool which i would not trade for any card in the deck and here it is it came at, out at right the at top the top of the spread there of the uh yep. oh we got a little santo dogs here too oh yes we do in the moon card that's right so uh but anyway guys i wanted you to see if anyone who's not familiar with the greatest card in the deck <laughs> the fool card If you can see the, uh, the the sidekick of the fool, have you ever seen that dog before? It's like Sancho Panza could have been the uh, the model for the uh, for the fool's sidekick. So anyway, I love being the fool. So awesome. she just drew my Celt Celtic cross right. with the fool on top. Yeah, it's and we got another Sancho dog at the bottom do. here. We have, we have dogs on the moon. Yes, yeah, so we got Sancho well. dogs crawling all over my Celtic cross. <laughs> all right. All right. So let's get into um, the rest of this. Right before the video cut out, I had just put uh. out the main um, beginning of the card spread. So funny enough, we did do a few oracle cards, and we were talking about a lot of closings and new beginnings, and the keyword that came out for Sam is the new beginnings card. Yes. Um, so it was really just a kind of incredible uh, synchronicity that those two... The segue hand into hand. the uh, yes. tarot that got cut off by the camera. All right, Absolutely. the Celtic Cross. So the Celtic Cross is what a, does always... This mean? Well, it's, it's a classic tarot spread that starts out with, you know, this five in the middle. We have the main one here. And then it's going to have four cards up the side. And I will clarify each one of them yeah. with a second deck. I'm using the uh, Radiant Rider Weight Tarot for the initial spread. And I'm going to be clarifying with the Everyday Tarot. So if anybody's interested in those cards, that's what the names of the decks are. So right in the center, we have the Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands is a like, stand your ground, don't put up with anybody's BS. You feel like you have the higher ground. You feel like you have, you know, a good argument, whatever it is. You feel kind of feisty about yourself, kind of assertive. You're really not willing to capitulate to other people sometimes it's a card that says be careful what battles you pick yes right because not all Maybe. of them are worth your time or energy no, they're not. um some of them it's like it's it's not important like internet trolls don't don't worry about them just whatever <laughs> the, like, the mask battle in, in my um those important ones like in the my mask own, battle. In my own channel's live streams, I always say that trolls are good luck because if you weren't doing something right, they wouldn't yeah. be coming around at all. They wouldn't care, right? <laughs> so I'm going to clarify that Seven of Wands, this is the center, this is the key. Um, why is the Seven of Wands here? Show us that, please. Let's see. And we have the King of Swords. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's sharp-tongued right there. This is some Aquarius energy. Um, it can be making good plans. It's the Master Strategist. And so what I see with that, the Seven of Wands clarified with the King of Swords is, you know, maybe setting yourself free from having to feel on the defensive all the time. You know, it's like, this is sort of the higher mind. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to cut out the drama. I'm going to cut out the BS. There's a lot of things that aren't worth my time. I've got to make plans. You do. You've got to make plans for new yeah. beginnings and new things coming in. Um, yeah, and the King of Swords is the master plans. strategist, the master planner, somebody that uses their logic, uses their mind to make good choices going forward. In the immediate past, we have the Four of Swords. That's my classic take a nap card. <laughs> so to me, you've, <laughs> you've been coming from a place 
where you have been fighting a lot of battles, um, you know, and this could have been as, an, as a result of ex having experienced heartache and, and, you know, even romantic or friendship hardships and needing a break from the drama. Yeah, it's a yeah. break from the drama. A break from just, you, you know, luck. the hurting and, and the hardship and just needing to, like, completely turn the brain off, meditation, solitude, taking care of yourself. You know, that's really favored with that four of wands. So that, four of swords, I'm sorry. And that's where you're coming from. That's the past position. That's the immediate past position. There's the um, secret garden. Yeah, yeah. Times in the secret garden. I mean, that kind of thing would really help. Just, just clearing out the head, you know, very important for you. Because your sun and your moon sign are both ruled they're all both in, pla in signs that are ruled by Mercury. Your mind doesn't get much breaks unless no, you, unless, my mind unless you really schedule them and give them permission. You have to literally give your brain permission to stop thinking sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, oh we got the world card, and yes, you did have that Saturn return not that long ago. The world is ruled by Saturn. It's the last card in the major arcana versus the full, which is the first card. So to me, this is major closures. I have. Major cycles coming to a end, but also happy beginnings, fulfilling beginnings. It's sort of like, and that, that happens easier when you kind of turn your brain off and, and get that clarity, get that objectivity, see things almost as if you're not even a part of them. There's a little bit of detachment sometimes that's important there. Um, you know, this is Saturn energy. It also involves um, four signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. And you got Aquarius energy here, Aquarius energy there. To me, this is freedom. It's liberation. It's the end of a challenging cycle and the beginning of new doors opening. It's, it's just, yeah. Going into the immediate future, we have the Page of Cups. The Page of Cups is messages of a romantic or emotional nature. Pages are always the messengers, and the cups are picking up that fishy phone to say, Hello, Sam, how are you doing? Been thinking about you. Been maybe thinking I had treated you so well, I need to apologize for something. You might say, Well, I need to apologize for something too. Don't count on it. <laughs> you gotta be flat. Oh, God. <laughs> that can be those messages though it's that kind of information oh. some kind of emotional messages something to do with the heart is signs associated with this are pisces cancer and scorpio This is like one of the most curmudgeonly readings I've probably yes. done. So the Eight of Swords on top of the Page of Cups. This is very much a self-imposed in prison. I mean, this is like you um, trapping yourself by negative thoughts that become, hey, no. that become self-fulfilling prophecies. Right. Yeah, the Eight of Swords is feeling all bound up. And you're sitting there going, I can't do this, I can't do that, there's no way this will work, ah, bah, 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 bah. You talk yourself into something going wrong, and voila, it happens, and it's like, oh, I knew it would go wrong. It's like, of well, course, because you... set you... yourself a low bar. So this is really important. You have, you know, setting yourself free from this feeling lack of self-confidence, lack of self-worth, that kind of thing can really come into that. And it's really up to you. Like, this is the kind of card that says you have to free yourself from those limiting feelings maybe in order to communicate emotionally in a more open way that's that's very strong there um, on the bottom what you're focused on what's your you know your your main main focus is the moon card the moon is a pisces card and funny enough that is the opposite you know balance of virgo pisces is your op equal opposite and so when you have this going on i feel like in some ways there is confusion that can come into that. You might feel like you're not exactly sure what path to take or where exactly things are going. And so it's like, it, it, it says, give it a little time. Give it a little time because you might be feeling kind of like, I'm not sure you know, which way to go because things look different under the moon than they do under the light of the day. And that's why the moon card has always had an association with deception or things not being as they appear to be. So it's important to kind of feel them out because this is Pisces energy, it's Cancer energy. I think the two things you're very focused on right now um, are spiritual growth and development, possibility of finding a life partner or soulmate, and how you are going to um, most successfully create a grounded home experience. 
with a spading fork. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're really focused on. Look at this ten of cups. Ultimate happiness, peace, bliss, the happy there home. You are. Look at right? the little kid and right? is that a little child. It is. Oh, it boy. is. And it doesn't mean you have to have a kid. You've oh, already got yeah. him. <laughs> Just replace that kid with another Sancho and you're good. Um, in some of those cards, there is a little Sancho, but you know, it's just, that's, that's, that's feeling of like happiness, harmony, relationships working out, things feeling good emotionally. These are both very emotional cards, very water sign oriented, right? A lot of Pisces, a lot of cancer energy on these. Very, very nice. I mean, it's, it's what you're focused on. It's really what's kind of like in the subconscious. This is what's, you know, kind of percolating. And here at the top. And here at the top, we have our full card. Yeah. This is always what I say is, you know, crowning the spread, message from spirit. This is what you're really meant to know about your process. And there the full card so is truly... Still on the journey. Take a leap of faith. The full card is all about take a leap of faith. Yep. Don't overthink. Don't overanalyze. And this, I think, is an interesting thing because that is really the challenge many times for Virgo energy is to not over worry or over analyze is to be able to take the leaps of faith. Um, I have a, right there, there's a fellow tarot reader on uh, YouTube named Ramla Mike. And he always says the fool card is the little dog saying, Hey, you're going to fall off the cliff. And the fool says, that's oh, okay. I'll land on my feet anyway. Say la vie. Geronimo, here I go. <laughs> You know, the Fool card reminds me of both Aries and Aquarius energy because it's a very childlike, innocent kind of, you know, mindset that says, you know, yeah, I may get hurt. Yeah, it may not work out, but I'm going to try it anyway. Holds that white flower of innocence in its hand. Purity of intention. I thought it was a mask he was holding. Uh-uh. No, no. It's a white flower. <laughs> it's a what? It's a mask he's holding. Maybe he has that. I think we should put mask on all of these tarot oh, card no. characters. <laughs> uh, Sam, you, Sam you've, you've got to make your own tarot deck with the, the mask on there. With the little mask there. all over, like the high priestess with the fucking mask on her. <laughs> well, then she wouldn't, like, you wouldn't be able to see her at all almost because uh, she's pretty covered up. <laughs> that's, the, that's the point, I think. <laughs> All right, let's get a clarifier on this yes, fool let's card. Yes, let's clarify the... Here. We're going to clarify the fool. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Look at that nine of swords. This is all... Oh, yeah, you've got the, the eight, eight of swords. and the nine. I'm Good telling Lord, you, see... This is tarot poker. We long, were dark... The, no, honey, this is dark night of the soul stuff here. Man. This is dark the night of the of soul swords, stuff right here. Right on splatting on the top. Worried, of overthinking, oh, overanalyzing, God. like I said. The this is the this is on top this is No, not really. I mean, it really, to me, shows the dichotomy. It absolutely shows there the dichotomy go. of what you're going through right now. Like I said... The fool is that message not to overthink and overanalyze. Yeah, I mean, this yeah. is the overthinking and overanalyzing yeah, right here. Two ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Right? So to me, it's really like Spirit is saying, you've got kind of this choice right here where you can either choose to embrace this very, you know, open, kind of, you know, optimistic almost, you know, sort of like, you know, clean slate, like let's just see what unfolds instead of staying up all night, get, letting it give you insomnia not being able to sleep for thinking about it. That's what that is, you know? And and, and many times, just like all well, the swords... That's always the challenge. Just like all the swords. The swords are the air element. They're the mind element. And so when those come up, you know, it may not even be a tangible thing that you're worried about. It's just thoughts. It's just fears, right? It's not even a thing that you can actually touch or, or hold, and you don't want it to turn into a manifestation. What's that thing about your thoughts become your actions, and your actions become your life? And what's that saying? <laughs> What's that? So let's get some advice. Let's get some advice. All right, I need some advice. <laughs> I don't know if he'll take it, but we're going to get yeah. it anyway. <laughs> I told you once, I told you oh, twice, man. I don't need no one's advice. What was that song? Uh, no one could steer me wrong, Mama tried, Mama tried. <laughs> the dragon's trying now, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see, we got four, please, to start here with Sam. Thank you. Okay. Ooh, nice, nice. <gasps> there we go. All right. We got some advice. We know the devil was coming out. We knew it. But the, okay, so suggested approach to a pentacles. This is balance, 
keep keep things one day at a time. This is really to avoid worrying too much in the future because the Two of Pentacles is all about keep it one day at a time, one step on the tightrope, right? It's like don't worry too much about the next step. It's very zen. It's a very zen card. It's very much stay in the now, stay in the present moment. And it's also about joy in the journey, having more fun doing what you're doing, not feeling so weighed down um, by your journey, right? It's also flexibility, adaptability. We see them ships rocking away in the background. I've never figured out what's up with that hat, though. <laughs> Which hat? His out. hat or my hat? No, this hat. That, that guy's hat. That's a bizarre hat. It looks like know. a traffic cone. I know it does. Some of the headgear in these cards is pretty phenomenal. <laughs> Ooh, a Knight of Pentacles. Very nice. So we got a Two of Pentacles with a Knight of Pentacles on top. So suggested approach, stay in balance, stay in the now, and make a long-term plan. Yes. Because the Knight of Pentacles is the most successful knight of the tarot. He has the best chance of succeeding on his journey. There's four different knights in the tarot, but the Pentacles one is always the most successful because he makes a plan, he packs snacks, he comes prepared, um, he knows he's going to have to make the journey. It might take a little more time. You might procrastinate a little bit more before he gets going. But once he gets going, he has a better chance of getting there because he has a plan. King of Pentacles coming out next. We got a lot of pentacles here. Getting these pentacles. These are nice because you are an earth sign and these are your element. Mm -hmm. Pentacles are the earth element. So, what you need to know yeah. King of Pentacles. This oh, is our Taurus wow. King. And, and you know, may, some people may argue with me on that. They'll say, no, it's Capricorn. I say it's Taurus because we got bulls right on that throne. That's a Taurus man right there. This is a master manifester. This is somebody that knows how to make plans, knows how to create financial or material abundance, oh, knows yes. how to plant things in the ground. Oh, that's important. That's he's, a big thing. Looks like he's got his baby tomato plant. Uh, he does. He totally freaking does. Journey, right? He's got his ginkgo trees and nah, he's got all his stuff. I this know is, all about yeah. journeying with baby tomatoes. Yeah, I think you are right here. Uh, <laughs> Packed snacks, as you say. Absolutely. So, but King the of Pentacles, though, right for I think month. this is also telling you you may more, be more successful at a venture than you think you will or know mm -hmm. you will. And it's also telling you go ahead, plant those seeds in the ground, you mm -hmm. know, because, yeah. you know, working with the earth, working with the land is important. And the other beautiful thing about our King of Pentacles is that he's a masculine figure, but he also has that femininity that comes with that earth element, that Venus element. And so, it really is about not just doing the work but enjoying the fruits of the labor. His gown is covered yeah. with enjoying the grapes. Enjoying those BLTs. The fruits of the vine. Exactly. Enjoying what, what you've actually produced instead of just being, well, I just got to get back to work. That first vine ripe uh -huh. tomato I pop in my mouth. Make all of this worth it. <laughs> Dragging these little fuckers all over the country. <laughs> They're beautiful, though. They are beautiful. So let's get a clarify on clarification king on the baby tomatoes. Of Pentacles. These are tomato king now. <laughs> the tomato king. Ooh, it's the queen of wands. Yeah, there we got working the magics there. there That's our go. Leo queen. This is this is this is the alchemist. This is the magician. This is a magic couple here. There you go. There it is. There it is. Um, you know, she's the kind of queen that's you know, spiritual, she's magical, she knows how to make things happen. This is, you know, it's a generous card, too. It's a generous energy. It's very nice. Maybe you'll meet the love of your life up there planting them. Maybe, maybe, like planting them, maybe tomatoes. Yes. The tomato queen. The tomato queen. If she has a little black cat, it might be. There you go. Because then the queen of wands always has a little black cat because she is. Someone who is, you know, in that kind of magical world. She knows how to manifest. And and very bright. Again, I know you hate to hear this, but I'm just saying, you might be happier in the coming days. I hope so. There's a little more joy in this. All right, so not only do we have our King of Wands, we got our King of Wands. So this is a nice power couple energy right here. This is in the hopes and fears position, King of Wands. So to me... There is this hope of taking action. You want to get going with something. You want to move it forward. You want to go after and get what you want. But there's also that converse fear, right? It's like, can I do it? Do I have what it takes? Because I'll tell you something about Virgos. Yes. I'll tell you something about Virgos. Y'all, I'm going to jump all over you with this one. Y'all beat yourself down the worst of anybody. You do. You're very self-critical, self-depreciating. You never 
really realize how good you actually are. That's a really big thing. And I get on Virgos all the time yeah. about it. Yeah. I, I do. I do because I'm like, damn it, you're better than you think you are. Y'all are so like, oh, we're nothing. Oh, I ain't nothing. I'm not that good. I don't know. Mm -mm, but yet at the same time, you're a sign of that once that has perfection. It's very yeah. picky about how things are done. But you're hard on yourself. Virgo tends to be the kind of sign that if they're drawing a picture and they mess one little thing up, they throw the whole freaking thing out. They're like, oh, it wasn't perfect. And I'm like, bit, bit, bit. So for Virgos, it's really important to learn that sometimes there's perfection and imperfection, and just because it was messy doesn't mean it was wrong. How many down to drive has taught me well. Good, that, yes. good. But this is to me like this is you possibly second guessing how worthy you are of the goals that you have, or the dreams that you have, or or going after the things that you want to get. Right? It's that's. Big one. It's Aries energy, King of Wands, you know. He's pushing his way to the front of the line. But you're a little bit like, should I push my way to the front of the line? I want to, but I don't know if I should. <laughs> and we got seven of pentacles. So More I definitely pentacles. Oh yeah, you, you got, got the Earth. Seven, the eight, you got the nine, Earth all over Good this thing, nine. which is great. What because does she have daisies? She's planting. She is she's, planting. Yeah, this is Lord. this is the planting seeds card. Everyone one is sticking seeds. And in look, the at, there's your fork. There's there, your thing oh, that you had. Oh, there's the very that, that's, that's identical. That's the one you were using today. That, that is exactly the tool I was <laughs> using. Yep. So to me, seven of pentacles is steady as it goes one day at a time do the work put the seeds plant the intentions and then go get them right no. and then go get them outcome card is the devil mm -hmm. yeah see out <laughs> outcome card the devil the is capricorn card. energy i know see i got own this because my my that's my sign is capricorn so i am the devil card in the caro so to me this is Capricorn energy. The thing about the devil is it actually reminds me quite a lot of this Eight of Swords, right? It's that entrapment. It's that being chained to things. It's that lack of freedom, lack of liberation, feeling stuck in either a bad routine, a negative cycle, um, working too hard and not having any fun at it. That's what the devil is about. It can be that workaholic energy. So there's, there's, with every card, there's negatives and positives here, right? When I see the devil, I see the eight of swords, I'm saying there's something that you have to liberate yourself from. There's something that you've got to set yourself free from, whether it's Some excessive. Ass. Rather, <laughs> Set whether, it's whether it's yeah, whether it's excessive worry, you know, whether it's worry, I have whether my it's doubts, whether I can set health myself concerns. free of the mask. I'm trying to push them in a different direction than it working. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's clarify, Mr. Let's Devil. Let's clarify here. the devil. Old goat man being all grumpy and imposing here. Hey, I understand it. That's it can be heavy. It can be. The goaties can be real workaholics. Maybe it's telling you you need to get some goats to help clear your yard. Uh, I've thought about that, but the coyotes and the wolves oh. and the. Two Hi. of Cups. See, look at that nice love connection. Love Something that very devil. healing. Yeah, I know. Love that devil. But, you know, I think that to me, it's like this is, you know, setting yourself free from a lot of old worries that have maybe prevented you from having the kind of relationships that you want. You know, that, that's an obvious. And it can be healing your heart from some old negative routines and patterns. Woo! Nice. Look at what's on the bottom. Ten of Pentacles. And more on, Pentacles. On the bottom of the Rider weight. You had the Ten of one of, of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles in this read. And on the bottom, we got that Four of Wands right there. There it is. That is a happy home. Um, good relationships. Bugs in a jar. Feeling celebratory about where you are. I feel like you're going in a good direction, but the biggest things... The biggest challenges, because a lot of these cards are super positive, the biggest challenges are things like this and things like this, right? The Eight of Swords, Nine of Swords, and the Devil. And it's it, to me, this isn't obvious. Those cards added up. This is, this is overthinking, overanalyzing or criticizing yourself unduly, beating yourself up, maybe regretting old things, da, 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 replaying it in your mind. And it's time to set yourself free. It's time to forgive yourself. Um, you know, for any of that stuff. I'm just putting it out there. You ain't got to pick it up. <laughs> so I'm going to pull an oracle card from our hero's journey. 
Uh, Oracle Hero's deck journey. here. Yeah, I love. I, I have so many um, tarot and oracle decks. It can be a challenge to pick them, but I stuck with kind of some classics. So what is this card telling me? This is going to be an affirmation an that affirmation. sort of sums this up for you. Let's uh, see what the, comes out. The affirmations. Dun, 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 dun. Weird is the new cool. <laughs> There you go. I, I love this. Say. I love this. Perfect. Weird is the boldly, new cool. e boldly express your uniqueness. All right. That's perfect for you. Now, that's not a traditional tarot deck. No, no. This is an oracle deck. And on the bottom, we had the return. So I think about that. You're returning back to where you were and own your mastery. This is the number four again on this. I love it. Four, four, eight. We got a lot of four. We got a lot of eight. Nice, but yeah. So what you think, buddy? How's it? How's it sitting? All right. I'm taking under advisement from the universe. <laughs> Weird is the new cool. Well, I enjoyed I'll be this. the coolest son of a bitch on pile of fish right now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think it's good, and always, as always, I say take any any reading with a grain of salt. Um, you know, don't just listen to it. Listen to yourself. Listen to your intuition. Right? You know, it's always it's no no. Um, Was it uh, substitution for your own experience in life? But this can give you a good snapshot of where you are right now, where you may be headed if you continue that way, um, things that you might want to be aware of that you can work on or tweak. Um, you know, we all overthink things. We all overanalyze stuff. Virgos do it a lot. Oh, they do it a lot. They do it a it's lot. It's one of the hardest signs to be, no joke. It is one of the most um, multifaceted signs as well because Virgo rules medicine, agriculture, health, routines, habits, purification, detox and clarity. Um, you know, detox it's, and it's, clarity. It's a lot of things, right? It's, it's, it's many different um, aspects. So you will find a lot of Virgos in healthcare work, um, medicine, nutrition, yoga teachers, um, people that are caregivers. Uh, you know, Virgo's motto is "I serve." They're all about helping humanity in some weird way, yes. whether it's more conventional Getting or not conventional. Getting them to sterilize themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, kind of like, because, <laughs> well, and where is that coming from? It's coming from, I want this for the health of the planet. Yes. Right? It's That's where it's actually coming from, is, is that realization that people are hurting themselves by making too many of themselves. We've stretched ourselves and everything else way too thin. We're way over budget. <laughs> <laughs> We're way, way. Is a doomer chick, uh, we are way over budget. Reader. Yes, I kind of am. Um, the, I, I don't always let that out, but yes. <laughs> to row for doomers. <laughs> that's a niche. That, that, that's a market niche. Cheer up, but, re, but still remember yeah. WASF. <laughs> Be, try to be happy while you're still you still can. Exactly. That's yeah, the, I mean that's to me that's it. About. You know, that's try the, to stay in a good place while you're while the, you can. Uh, what is the outcome? The ultimate outcome. Right, or? the devil. Right, yeah. the devil's in the details. Uh, um, but quite a nice reading. Your own card, your fool card, came up in it. It did. Um, you know, this is this is a lot. It's always a lot to a take lot in. Of stuff on this table. But I feel like there's a lot of things closing and a lot of things beginning. Both in the tarot and both in especially your astrology. Good grief. That was like a lot of new, of new beginnings and old closures. And also numerologically. You just got that really full circle. Full circle stuff going on here right now. Um, so let it play out. All right. <laughs> well, that was quite the uh, performance. Oh, well, I appreciate you having me on the channel. Yes. And um, if anybody is interested in checking out what I do or getting a session with me, uh, I'm sure you'll put up my channel name. It's Dragon Tail Tarot. So. All right. Yay. All right, dragons. <laughs> dragons and gators, have a good night, y'all. Take care. As the storm blows in, oh, yeah, Lord, we're the gonna news. get hosed. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Onward.
Oh my goodness.